Hey everybody, so glad to have you with me for this review of the Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Powder Foundation. And they claim 16 hour wear with this, up to 16 hour wear. I have it in the shade Buff Beige, that's 130. And I am a huge fan of the Superstay Liquid Foundation. So anytime they come out with something with that Superstay name on it, I am all in. I really want to try it. And that liquid foundation, by the way, I feel is truly full coverage as it claims to be. It lasts a really long time. It just looks great on my skin. So I love that. And then the next thing they put out not too long after was that stick foundation with the Superstay name, like a cream to powder stick. And I was not a fan of that. Now they've got this powder and I was so eager to try it because you don't see a lot of powder foundations really popping out that full coverage claim. So I was really eager to see if this was something different, you know, offering something extra. On the back of the packaging here, it says matte finish, lightweight and comfortable, fade and transfer resistant, and control shine. So it definitely is a matte powder in here. The packaging, um, it's just a clear top, as you can see. This flips up, so you do have the mirror, and then there's a sponge underneath. To touch the product, it does have a very smooth feel. And there is a softness, but not really a softness that kicks up a cloud of powder. You know, you'll really see that when you put a brush into this stuff. It does not have a lot of fallout, which is interesting because I think sometimes we associate that quality with pigmentation or it's going to really like transfer a lot of product onto the skin. But interestingly enough here, I just did a swatch on my finger and then I rub over it and you don't really see the swatch moving around, which is kind of odd for a skin tone colored powder like this. So I think it does have a bit more ability to adhere to the skin than some other powder. I've tried and I think that's because there is such a softness and smoothness to this formula But it's not dusty. It's not kicking up that cloud everywhere, you know um, in this video I will show you an application of it going on But just a little description of what I've gone through as I've tested this I've tried this now for about five days in different ways and my first instinct for what would be a good application method Was this flat top brush because I enjoy that so much with bare minerals products And I just feel like it picks up the product. Well, it blends it easily into the skin. However, I feel felt like maybe this brush is just a little too soft and smooth to agitate this powder enough to really pick it up and see it transferring onto the skin. I just didn't feel like it was working. So I went to my complexion brush, which is what I would normally use with any powder that I'm just going to like set foundation with. And I felt like when I did tap into this, again, it wasn't kicking up any fallout or anything, but it seemed to just be able, maybe just the taper of these bristles, it was able to pick up the product a little bit better. So that's one method that I can use for putting it on. I also have used the sponge that's provided. And there I think you will see the coverage building up. I think ultimately what I've decided is I like putting it on with the complexion brush and then kind of going over certain areas, pressing in the product with a little bit extra just to attempt some added buildability. Because now we get to the part where is it actually full coverage? And I would have to say no. It is certainly matte on the skin and it definitely is capable of evening out the overall skin tone. But as you'll see in the demo, it's not really covering up the things that a full coverage product would. And I think anything that says full coverage, we have to hold it to the same standard, you know? They didn't have to put that claim on here, but since they did, and since they do have a liquid foundation that claims full coverage and truly is, I'm going to hold this to the same standard, and I just don't feel like it covers everything. I'm still going to see freckles. I'm still going to see concentrated areas of redness or discoloration. And I do think it's buildable to a point, but that end is medium for me. Before I get into the demo, I want to talk briefly about how this works on top of a foundation, though, because in a lot of cases, I will use a powder foundation to just give that little bit enhanced coverage to different liquid foundations that I'm putting on, and I think it performs very well in that sense. Again, it doesn't kick up a big cloud of product when you dip a brush into it. You will definitely be mattified when you put this on. It's not a glowy effect product whatsoever, and I think it does a very good job of assisting different liquid foundations or BB creams in having a little bit stronger coverage look when you're done with that base step of your makeup. On its own, I feel like it just takes a little more time. You're building and building. You're not really achieving the full coverage place. You will end up mattified and you will like just the overall tone of your skin. I think you'll feel it's more even, but I think my demo will describe it best. So take a look. So if I'm going to do a powder foundation, I do a little concealer first and I figured I'd let you see, you know, the bare face where we're starting out now. And then I'll do the concealer, then the foundation. And this is the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Concealer. I've been actually pretty impressed with this stuff. I wear it in fair. I think it says W1 slash 2. It clicks up through the little 
puffy thing there and um, I'm just going to use this around my deepest darkest areas the dark areas around my eyes just anywhere I would normally conceal because I'm really not expecting that powder foundation to do more than a liquid would do you know what I'm saying and because it's powder it feels right to you know go in with your liquid concealer steps first this is just my Sephora Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush and I'm just going to dab this in So I tried to keep the areas where I applied the concealer pretty targeted, you know, so under eye, a little around the nose, a little on the chin, but I don't want to take over too much for what that powder is going to do. So now we pop open our powder and I'm going to start off applying it with my e.l.f. complexion brush. I just really like the way this grabs the product. And as you can see, there's not really any powdery fallout, like maybe just a little fine bit of powder, but I'm really like getting in there with the brush and you don't see powder dust up everywhere and I think that may be a hallmark of a powder that's going to cling a little better um, than some that would kick up a lot of dusty fallout like just adhere to your skin better I think I was paying close enough attention here while I was talking and I pretty much applied this to half the face not sure if you can see a huge difference here to me I feel like I've put on plenty of product on this side but it's definitely a medium coverage light to medium I've definitely put in some time with this product experimenting with different ways to put it on and I just don't feel like I get past that point where I'm really like covering up little freckles and just the minor imperfections on the skin it's just not doing a ton there even redness around the nose like you've got to build it up quite a bit to get somewhat satisfying coverage over those areas um, what it definitely will do for you is mattify because this is not a glowy product at all you have no hope really of putting this on and thinking, hmm, I'm, I look dewy and fresh right now because you just, you won't with this. Liquid foundations sort of give you that prospect, you know, but not really a matte powder foundation. You're just going to come away looking matte and hopefully as even as you can be. So I've put that on all over now with my e.l.f. complexion brush. And what I'm also going to do is take the sponge provided here and I'm going to see if I can build coverage in certain areas because I have found the sponge to be decent you know I kind of dab it in and I'm looking at areas where I've got a lot of freckles or just a little bit of melasma peeking through and seeing how much I can perfect those zones but it's tough because those areas are kind of nearing the under eye and how much powder do you want to cake up in that zone for me it's kind of a fine line but I do feel like this kind of pushes in what I've put on with the brush and I don't know helps the coverage a little bit and this isn't just a puff by the way I don't remember what I called it but it's it's a sponge and you could start with it I've started my application fresh with this too but I just kind of feel like the best result that I get on my skin is when I combine and just use this as sort of a finishing step slash building it up. So there's what you get after you apply that all over. I'm gonna really try to bring it in for you here close. I want you to see what you can still see on my skin. Just those little characteristics that I think tend to get covered up by a full coverage liquid foundation, like Superstay Liquid would totally take care of this stuff. Um, but with the powder, I am getting a lot of overall evenness to my skin, but I'm still seeing those little things, the little broken capillaries around the nose, the little freckles or little remnants of melasma on the skin. I can still see that. But that's my application using this stuff truly as powder foundation. Now yesterday I put it on as just powder to set my foundation and I thought it gave a great mattifying effect. The sort of medium coverage that this product offers I think will further perfect almost any foundation. So that was really nice to see but I think it's just good to be aware that when you want to use it on its own it doesn't go totally full coverage. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my look and I'll be back. So now here we are with the finished look. I'll just let you know real quick what else I'm wearing. Um, on my skin, I've got on the Casey Holmes Butter Collection, the bronzer and the blush that you see here, also the lip color and the fragrance for that matter. I was playing around with the eyeshadows yesterday and at the same time I ordered that, I ordered the Butter Eyeshadow Palettes. So today I wanted to try this one, the Tropical Days. I struggled a little bit with that purple. I've got that dark teal on the lower lash line, although I don't know. I spent quite a bit of time building both both of those shades up for an ultimately subtle effect but the mattes um, built up really quickly. And an important thing to note, you're seeing this glow on top of the cheeks. I used my Natasha Denona Super Glow 
the shade is fair and I think that's really essential if you're using this super matte powder that's just really not giving any sort of glow to the skin. If you want to come away looking somewhat fresh at the end of everything, make sure you pop on that highlight that really is going to catch the light on top of the cheeks and just give you a little more vibrant look, you know what I'm saying? But just assessing this finished look now, I'm not displeased with it, you know? We used a little concealer, we used the powder foundation, I've got some nice blush and bronzer highlighter steps on there. If I look up really close, I can see some little imperfections still lurking, but I don't hate the finished look. That being said, I still want to hold the product to its claim of being full coverage, which I feel it's not. So in that sense, it's a little disappointing. But I will continue to get use out of this, probably mostly as something to top off different liquid foundations when I feel like I could use that little extra coverage boost. But the next claim here is staying power, and they say up to 16 hours. I really don't feel like I've gotten to that place with this product, especially when using it alone. It's harder to gauge things, I guess, when you're using it in combination with a foundation because you're thinking, well, does this foundation just tend to wear really well on me or what's the cause of the great staying power? So it's hard to say there. But when wearing this alone, which I have done for four out of the last five days, I feel I see a definite fading on my skin. Now, I think it adheres to the skin better than a lot of powder foundations would. I feel like it is putting up a fight, but if I'm putting it on at 5 a.m. and then looking at myself in the mirror at 4 or 5 p.m., I'm seeing a lot of overall fading. I don't feel like I turn into a huge grease ball, and that's not really even my skin's tendency this time of year. I'm pretty much normal skin type to a little bit dry in some areas, but it's just the look on the skin like I don't really seem to have much makeup on at all. And that's just 11 or 12 hours. That's not even hitting the 16-hour mark, but I'm going to be tracking it for you today in a wear test so you can see for yourself exactly how it goes. But as for my little wrap-up here on this product, is it delivering on every claim? No, I don't think it is. I don't think it's full coverage. I don't think it lasts 16 hours, but I do think it's matte. I do think it's kind of a special texture for a powder like this to offer some decent coverage and really like adhere to the skin, I think, better than a lot of things would. It's not dusty, powdery, dry, but it is very, very matte. I'd love to hear what your favorite application method is if you've been trying this too, but for a seven or eight dollar powder from the drugstore, I think it's quite good. Um, if you compare it to other things on the market that might be similar, I think about Milani's Conceal and Perfect powder. That's a really good powder foundation. I think there's a lot of coverage in that. I probably see a little more on the skin than I see from this, but it also is a little bit more powdery, and I don't know that I've really assessed that on the all-day staying power claim, but initially I do feel like I see a little more coverage out of that stuff. Still really love the LA Colors Mineral Pressed Powder. There's an example of a very soft powder. It will kick up a little bit more when you put your brush into it, but the coverage is very good and doesn't look quite so makeup-y, though. I wouldn't say it's ultimate full coverage, but it probably gets to that medium coverage place while looking a little more natural, and so does the L'Oreal True Match as well. A little more mattifying than the LA Colors, not full coverage, but medium. But with a lot of those powders, I don't really go around wearing them as is. I use them as an assistant to some other product that's on the skin. And in past days when I've taken a hard look at this, like it just hasn't really performed the entire day. It doesn't last as well as Bare Minerals does all day on me. And I'm talking the traditional Bare Minerals like loose powder foundation. So hopefully that gives you a little context there. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was useful to you and I will see you in my check-ins. Bye. Hey guys, I'm updating you now at the six hour mark. I feel like at a glance the skin is looking pretty even um, at the up close analysis. I'm actually seeing some signs of oiliness around the nose. Now this is highlight, this was intentional, but around here I really wouldn't be applying highlight in that zone and I'm a bit concerned at the look of oil here and also on the forehead. And to touch it, I can tell you it's feeling a little tacky, which I actually haven't experienced with this foundation. I've had the slow kind of face throughout the day. My bronzer, blush, and eyeshadow are still going strong. This is natural light here, by the way. I really want you to be able to see it just like how I'm experiencing it throughout the day. So yeah, we'll check in later. Checking in on the makeup now after 12 hours. My eyelashes were starting to come off, so I went ahead and took them off. But I'm seeing the experience now that I've had a lot of times wearing this. I really haven't gotten any more oily since midday, but I feel an overall kind of faded effect from the makeup. We'll check in again a little bit later and we'll see what happens at 16 hours. Okay gang, we are now really close to 16 hours of wear 
and I feel like I'm seeing so much of my natural skin through this, but it's always a hard call to make until you see how much makeup is left on your face wipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my makeup and we're gonna see if there's a lot of face makeup still hanging on. Not a ton, but there's a little. A little what, what, where? I'm talking to my camera. Oh. Outside of the eye makeup, not really a robust amount of um, the foundation-y type stuff coming off on here. Not really shocked because as I said, it didn't look like there was a lot still remaining on the skin, but I still think there may have been some, you know, I really have tried to be conscious today of not touching my face, not like unintentionally rubbing some away. And I do think that this powder may be hanging on better than a lot of things, not quite as well as Bare Minerals lasts on me because I can have a pretty fresh look with that, like pretty much the whole day. So that's where we're at with staying power. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this review was helpful and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye.